Hello guys, myself Dr. Atul Nakure and right now I am standing in front of XPS instrument. Now you can see this most large instrument we have at CSIL National Chemical Laboratory Pune and we are fortunate to have Dr. Sadhu, scientist CSIL in Sil Pune. Now uh, Honorable Dr. Sadhu sir will go to explain the working procedure of XPS instrument. Sir, thank you. Okay, so this is highly sophisticated surface science instrument. So this, I think, uh, this instrument is the first instrument in India, uh, CSI National Chemical Laboratory in Dr. Gopinath's lab. So this uh, instrument basically <coughs> good for heterogeneous catalysis in the sense. When this instrument uh, big wise, so here you can put the sample, and then the sample is like transferred through this linear transfer arm to this chamber and here we have a sputtering gun we can sputter the sample using uh, argon ions because this uh, machine generates this uh, sputtering gun generates argon ions high speed argon ions and that high speed argon ions is going to bombard on the surface some of the atoms from the surface get removed and then <coughs> this this will uh, clean the surface of the sample and then later on we can anneal the sample in, in the same chamber uh, because to, uh, for cleaning the surface of the sample, we need to run the sample several times and put the sample several, several times. Again, we can take this uh, sample from this transfer arm to the analysis chamber. This is called analysis chamber. So here we have the dual anode X-ray source, then the UV source, and then this, this is a hemispherical uh, uh, analyzer. So what happens, this X-ray source generates the X-ray, this X-ray is all on the surface, of the sample and then this X-ray interact with the uh, two layer of the sample and then because of X-ray interaction photoelectrons generated and that generated photoelectrons came to this analyzer and there is a detector, detector will detect that uh, photoelectrons. Basically and that both from the photoelectrons we can identify the oxidation state of the surface. In how this, 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 <coughs> this instrument is very useful if you want to see the oxidation state of oxygen, sulfur, carbon, or metals, all materials. That's why this instrument in surface science is basically uh, powerful techniques to identify all the oxidation states. Secondly, we have ultraviolet photoelectron spectroscopy also, that is EV source. So here EV source energy is 21.21 electron volt and that photons are again bombarded on the surface of the samples and that photons are again interact with the photo electrons and then photo electrons generate and it will emit from the surface. So from the ultraviolet photo electron spectroscopy it's very surface sensitive technique. We can identify only one or two layer of the surface. But X-ray photo electron spectroscopy is uh, like to be X-ray penetrate uh, through the sample up to 10 nanometers. So photo electrons emit uh, uh, from the surface of 10 nanometer of the sample and that uh, uh, photo electrons analyzed by the uh, analyzer. So there is one more uh, uh, source that is uh, uh, this one, sir. Uh, this one. Yeah. So this source is like uh, uh, is a monochromator, so only single wavelength because the dual anode generates like uh, uh, the peak of the X-ray source is a Gaussian kind of. But here we can get the Lorentzian peak with single wavelength. Single wavelength is important many times because you will not get the multiple uh, photoelectrons emitted like uh, different energies of the photoelectrons emitted. But here you get a similar kind of uh, energy of the photoelectrons. That's why this technique is better to see the nice uh, spectra of any sample. And then uh, this is the whole electronics uh, to control this machine. This is like uh, it has a multi-channel analyzer, pre-amplifiers and log amplifiers all this stuff. And these are the power supplies, high voltage power supply, temperature power supplies and vacuum control power supplies here. And here you can see this whole machine is connected to the computer software. Here we have uh, <coughs> the vacuum control but the screen was not running now. You can see. So this is your sample, this is like gas is coming from this pipe, this is UV source and that side the X-ray source and this cone is, uh, uh, is a uh, 
uh, electrons going to the analyzer. So this is called as like this instrument basically high pressure uh, X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy. If you have a gas inside a chamber, 10 to the 1 millibar, but very few gas molecules go to the, this chamber. Here we have the uh, this basically. Okay. So then from here uh, one can see the sample. Uh, holder and the cone and everything was there uh, like this so but this cone you can see this cone this cone is connected with differential pumping we have many turbo molecular pumps to pump that uh, entire cone part to have a high vacuum in the analyzer because whatever the photo electrons coming from the cone it has to be detected by the uh, analyzer so guys for your knowledge this is the High quality instrument, this is one of the instruments of experience we have in whole India. Now, hello guys, for your knowledge, this experience instrument is one of the fine instruments we have at CSR NCL Pune. Now I request Dr. Sadhu sir, scientist at CSR NCL Pune, just to highlight what are the usefulness of this instrument. Over to you sir. Okay, so uh, this is like unique facility and first time in, in India and first time in CSIR National Chemical Laboratory in India. The so uniqueness of this technique is that this uh, using this technique you can uh, correlate uh, the study with real world catalysis. In the sense, what are the experience available in India or abroad, th this technique doesn't have the real uh, environment for the reaction. For reaction you need to have the pressure 1 millibar. But other techniques, they are in ultra high vacuum. That means 10 to the power minus uh, 10 torr vacuum inside the chamber. But here, we can generate 1 millibar pressure inside the chamber. That means it's a real environment for the reaction. If you like have a CO and oxygen in a proportion inside the chamber, and that uh, reacts with the surface of the catalyst, and the catalyst convert that CO2, uh, CO2, CO2, like CO oxidation. And at the same time, this X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy measures the oxidation and reduction state of the catalyst. That is the uniqueness of this technique. Secondly, we have ultraviolet photoelectron spectroscopy. That technique also works in a real-world catalysis in the sense from that ultraviolet photoelectron spectroscopy, you can find the oxide, band oxide or band gap of the material even in reaction conditions. From the reaction condition, Ultraviolet photoelectron spectroscopy gives, of, gives you the band gap change or band gap of the material or uh, minima of the conduction band and maxima of the valence band. That is really important in photocatalysis and electrocatalysis to find the band gap and band offset of the material. So that's why these are the really unique uh, uh, features of this instrument as you compare with other X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy or ultraviolet photoelectron spectroscopy. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for your valuable time, Dr. Sadhu sir, scientist at CSR and Silpune. Thank, thank you guys. Look at what instrument we have in the ULMA's XPS techniques I'm talking about. Thank you very much once again. That's all.